Hi everyone. Right, so the mystery guess I am going to draw, I'm just going to go insert a photo and we are going to see Captain America. Okay, so don't need the rest of this. All I'm going to do today is the face. Just going to concentrate on that and show you how I managed to do it. I'm not going to go into everything, so I'm just going to create a new layer. And I've got it selected blue and I've picked a pencil because I find a pencil far more useful to me in the early stage. So usually I'll be looking at his face or somebody's face on my phone and be sketching from there because I, I prefer that to tracing it helps me think more and a bit more advanced for my brain so what I like to do is I like to just sort of start at the top get a good idea of where all the features are so I'm starting at the top I can see where that is and I try and work out the distance between the top of his head and the bottom of his hairline here. So we're sort of looking about there. So I'm kind of thinking this is where I want to kind of start going and probably want to start drawing the crown of his head about there. It's got a bit of an angle, so I want to make sure I get that in because before, and you can probably see it in my earlier pictures as well, I thought I could do it without mapping it out first and I'll tell you what it takes so long to get it right doing it that way it's far quicker to map it all out first looking at distances so the distance between here for example between the center of his hairline to the back and trying to get that trying to get the angle trying to follow it around so you're sort of tracing it with your eyes Okay, so that's going to lead down to an ear, so I have to try and calculate where things are. The best way I find is like you find the middle of the hairline here, and we can go down, and I want to find this spot. So there, it's around about here, it's about the centre, which means there and there at the start of the eyebrows. Okay, now the bridge of his nose here, sort of around there. Now I'm going to figure out where the eyebrows go based on how close that is there. Bring it along. Now the peak of his eyebrow there matches up to here, where the hairline recedes the most. Can kind of tell that the hairline I've done doesn't recede enough. But anyway, that kind of gives me an idea of where to tail off his eyebrow. I'll just do the other one. Okay, now I can't complete the other one because I've got to do his forehead. And now I've got to look at the range between his forehead and the centre line. So to try and get that right just to do this so it kind of curves a little bit and then protrudes a bit more where his eyebrow goes and that gives me a bit more of an idea of where things are okay it's a good picture actually he's got a lot of, a lot of expression in his face now at the bottom of that eyebrow you can see that it curves around for the nose so everything sort of leads into everything else and it makes it a bit more easier to map it out and get it right. Now the bridge here, you can see this, you can see the distance between the bridge of the nose and where the eyes begin. Okay, so the eyes are going to start here and finish roughly here. And they don't go, so the bridge of the nose is there and the eyes kind of along the bridge of the nose. So 
I don't want to change that. So now I can start drawing an eye because I've got basically the correct shape. And see how high it goes up. And one of the things I've learned over the years is to draw what you see. Don't think you know what's going on, unless you're drawing something from your imagination and fill your boots. But when you're drawing people, when you're drawing this way, you must draw what you see, because otherwise it's going to take you forever to draw the picture. But even when I do this, I'll see something and I'll think, why is it not right? Why is it not right? But Jim Lee from DC, who I follow on uh, YouTube, he said something that I completely agree with, and it's draw the eyes. If you get the eyes right, the rest will follow. Um, window to the soul, he says. And I think he says that in all of his videos. It's good advice, as you can imagine from Jim Lee. Uh, another guy that I'm also following on YouTube as well is Alex Ross. If you don't know who Alex Ross is, he is a phenomenal painter. So, uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to imagine where the cheekbone is here and where the bridge of the nose is here. So, you've got the bridge of the nose, and it leads up to this part, which I've been calling the bridge as well because I don't know di uh, biology very well. Human physiology. So, that's how I'm guessing where the cheekbone will be. And it kind of draws in a bit here because the end of the nose doesn't have as far to go. See? So I want something, and I want it to start around here, this nose. It's got an angle on it. He's a very symmetrical man, isn't he? But yeah, me and my daughter have uh, been doing a Marvel movie marathon uh, which we're struggling with at the minute, but we've just done uh, we've just done uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. But we're getting quite nerdy about it now because we, we understand what's going on. Right, so this part, the nostril, sort of it starts or finishes just before his eye, or just marginally after his eye. And then you've got this part here, shows you where the where the next cheekbone is. So it's not too far. So it's about here, isn't it? And the angle. It's pretty much like that, so curve in these lines a little bit to kind of show that off. I think I've done the distance here wrong, so I think the cheek comes in a little bit more than I've done it. And you've got this line, the distance between the nose. It's about here, isn't it? That's where it goes down. I'll tell you what, it is fun doing it this way. You should definitely try it. Okay. Very thin topped lip going on. Yeah, I, I find that starting a picture this way is far more easier because when you start painting it on Procreate straight away, yeah, it's good and sometimes it can work. And you know, I've got lucky a few times, which is why it's taken me a little while to start doing all this stuff properly. But 
after like you make like too many mistakes you kind of get a bit fed up with it and you just think oh, I just want to get on with it got other stuff got to do Uh, this isn't like the final stage, so all I'm doing is just getting the just getting the positioning right of everything. Okay, so it's not going to look a hundred percent, but as long as you've got the positioning, and then when you start painting it, it'll all start to work. It'll all start to fall into place, which only has done for me so far. Okay. I tried to draw a or paint Gamora the other day and uh, I had so much trouble, <laughs> so much trouble trying to do that. They had photoshopped her face so much, so Zelanda was so difficult to do. But I love that character, so it won't be the last time I ever go at doing it. But when you see it, just give me a like because it was probably really hard. Oh dear, how's everyone getting on with lockdowns? I'm obviously from England and we are experiencing one right now. Doesn't look like we're going to be allowed out until March. So uh, this should keep me fairly occupied. Okay. I think, uh, I think things are going fairly well with this. Just sort of doing a bit of shading where it's going to need to be darker. But this definitely, I, in my opinion, I don't think this is cheating. I've had, I've had that conversation with myself a lot and uh, there is no better practice than doing something like this because you just learn where everything is and uh, I kind of grew up feeling like you weren't allowed to rub anything out and uh, that's just not true to be honest I think if you're one of those people you need to wake up is, uh, is slowing your art down and, uh, and it took me a long time to work that out I actually went to an art class and told that to my teacher that I used to have art teachers that said that sort of thing to me she was gobsmacked my art has since just improved so much Got this eye a little bit wrong. I find he's got very kind eyes. And then uh, we'll work out where the ear is. So here's your distance. Distance to the ear there. Got your distance to the ear there. If you like, you can do that as well. But there's lots of things that inform me where his ears should appear. That doesn't mean you don't don't always get it right. Or I certainly don't always get it right. Okay. So it's sort of like around here, here. There's a bit of shadow. Some shadow around here. I might have that wrong. But again, doesn't really matter. You can get it all get it all during the painting really. As long as the as long as the shape and the, the image is correct. So I've drawn in this bit and from there is the ear, so it's not too far. Uh, here and that and 
see from from the guides just in your mind you know the ear is supposed to be around here so it's going to go there and anyone I think can do this so where's the lobe let's have a look so there's the ear lobe what can I use? I can use the distance between the mouth and there. So the mouth, it's about here. Just underneath where his nose is. So I think I've got that position completely correct. So he doesn't look like Steve Rogers by the end of this. I've done something very wrong. Or well, physics is wrong. Okay. And a lot of this doesn't really matter because it's all shadow. There we go, and there's shadow here. And that is the blue layer. Um, I won't go into way too much detail because that's just crazy. So I've gone into layers, I'll go to the end for uh, normal and I'll bring that down to about 36. Now I get my, get my paintbrush. You know what, for now, yeah I'll get my paintbrush. So I'll go to artistic. I hope I pronounce this right. Tarily. Tarily. Okay, so this should be a little bit easier than usual because I'll be able to get the colours straight from um, Steve Rogers. So what I like to do is I like to pick a mid-tone. So that to me is a good mid-tone. And then I'm going to block him out. So it's going to be, you take the opacity right to the top. Make your brush nice and big. And you just go over where his face is. His entire, his entire face. Okay. There you go, just block him in. If it goes on for too long, I might have to make it into a two-parter, but we'll see. Right, so that looks terrible, doesn't it? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that layer, hold it down with my pencil, and move it underneath. Hmm. No, I'm not. Ah. <laughs> I know what I did wrong. Uh -huh. I painted over my pencil. There you go, that's better. I knew there was something wrong. Yeah, so I don't know if any of you are in lockdown or or whether you're out and you're in one of those lucky countries that's got it all under control. But I've been keeping busy. So I'm uh, teaching my children at home, like most parents at the minute. Crazy, crazy times. Right. Now I'm going to use two fingers. I'm going to swipe it to the left quickly. No, I'm going to swipe to the right quickly. There we go. Now I've got these squares on it, which means that it's locked the image. So now I can't scribble outside. So if I go to my pencil, I'll show you. Just switch it to black. I can only draw on the painted surface. Okay. So now I can go back to 
monetarily and I can start going for it. So what I want to do first is I want to get all the shading areas in first. So I'll pick this this portion because it's not black. It's close but it's not black. And I'm going to just go in, yeah, so, so, bring it down a bit more, there we go. And getting in all the shadow and stuff is good, because it starts to help bring in the contrast. And you'll see that eventually it does start to does start to make sense. But the good thing about mapping it out beforehand means that I don't really have to think about the placement of stuff as hard as if I'm doing it, you know, just eyeballing it. It doesn't matter if I go over the air. We'll see why eventually. And it doesn't matter as well if I want to do my shading and it goes slightly over the sides because I've locked it all. So I'll just do all this here. I am rushing. Would normally be this reckless with it. I'd be a lot slower and it'd take me a good couple of hours. But for the sake of everyone involved, I'm trying to keep it down. So, like I said, I'm going to blitz this as much as I can. So I'm just getting a lot of his colours, trying to position them where they are on him. I'm aware this might be a bit of a long video, a bit longer than I usually do because usually my video is quite quick, it's usually a time lapse of something. But I just thought maybe maybe people would prefer to see something a bit more like this. Maybe see how I do it. And you can go away and try it for yourself. Don't you? And you don't need Procreate to do this, I don't think anyway. You could you could do this on a paper on a piece of paper. It's it's the same principle. All I'm doing is painting on one surface, one layer, and the only advantage I've got is if I cock it up, I can then undo it. And the number of times I've done a painting, a proper painting, and I've messed it up, and in my head I've gone undo, undo, and I haven't been able to do it, and I've ruined it. <laughs> Or I've actually had to figure out the artistic way of getting rid of something, which is usually you have to match the colour and and redo the whole thing, so or redo a part of it. But you know, it's the joy of being an artist really. When you get something wrong, you learn from it. I mean if you don't learn from it, it's your own fault. I try to learn from things that aren't working right. So now I'm doing the highlights. Just to try and sort of make sure that I have got everything right. That's the thing. If I know I've got everything correct, then I start to sort of work into it a bit more. So I don't start really working into anything until I'm convinced it's in the right direction but I'm doing this uh, in real time I'm not time lapsing it because uh, I just wanted to show you something so it's got this cool bit of light here I 
the bridge of his nose. <laughs> Everything to the bridge of his nose when I'm concerned. I just don't know anatomy very well. Oh, I don't know the names of it. If I did, I'd probably be a doctor. But I'm not going to lie about being an expert all this stuff. I just enjoy doing it and I practice a lot. It's just something I really enjoy doing. I'll use some of these highlights to start doing the whites of his eyes. But yeah, we've been really enjoying the uh, Marvel films. I have to say, I didn't enjoy them at first because um, I never understood whereabouts were supposed to be, so I never got any of the jokes. But on the on Disney Plus, you get to you get to watch it in timeline order. It's like, oh, I see. So as you can see, the blue lines are starting to fade out as I as I do this. So it'll get to the point where uh, I can just turn off that layer. If you're wondering why it went dark, it's because I got the colour from his eyebrow. <laughs> it's, uh, it does look a little bit like Donald Trump at the minute. Must have cocked up somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure he can bring it back. I'm sure he can bring it back. Or uh, maybe, maybe we found another career for Captain America. Another acting gig. Okay, I might bring that down a little bit. Just trying to sort of see where everything needs to be now. So I'm pretty sure that by now you're starting to get the idea of what's going on. And uh, what's made it easier is because I've done the uh, blue lines beforehand, something that, you know, like I said, you could go back and you could check my older videos don't do it and um, it takes me so long to work out the kinks once I've done that but now I've just thought no Rick do your job properly because it speeds everything up <laughs> it's like when you've got stuff to do you think oh yeah I spend all day doing this You know, but um, yeah, so my point is, is um, if I find out whether this sort of style of videoing is more popular than what I've been doing, I'll probably still do what I've been doing because I enjoy it. And I only ever want to do what I enjoy because uh, life's too short.
But uh, yeah, if it is popular, then I'll do more of these. And I'll try to help you out where I can. Where you will ask me questions and see what see what works and what doesn't work. Track his lips. Like I said, I'm I'm going a lot faster than I would do normally. But it does seem to be going all right at the minute anyway, so maybe I'm just a bit slow when I'm not filming myself. Taking my time. Got very red lips. That top lip is basically black. just stop looking like Donald Trump I'd be really happy yeah I'm uh, hoping not to do any time-lapse work on this and you can tell me whether that was a good idea or a bad idea. But if you really want to kind of like learn how I'm doing things, then I figure I'm probably supposed to be talking and giving you a chance to hear what I do while it's all going on. Sorting out his eyes a bit, might put the opacity up. I think that's slowing me down a little bit. There you go. Looks like we've got green eyes. Anyway, yeah, so it is, it is just fun doing this sort of thing, testing yourself all the time, just trying to sort of see what you're capable of and I guarantee you, you'll surprise yourself. Do what you see, don't do what you think you see. Really examine it, really have a look. And just do what you see. And just follow like the basic rules. If you can get your if you can get your blue lines as accurate as you can, then the rest should follow.
yeah, so like I said, I'm not going to time lapse any of it. I'll uh, wait to be informed by the general public about about this sort of stuff. I don't think I'm going to get rid of the fact that he looks like Donald Trump. It's in my head now. Gutted. Slide without the blue. It's not too bad. So the other thing that I like to do is go around the edge, just tidying it up a bit. Yeah, my brush is the same brush that I use to paint, so it gives the same effect. Yeah, that's better. I think it's. Uh, I think it was because I hadn't gone around the edge, that's why he was looking a bit more like Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, now he's looking a bit more like Steve Rogers. Oh, thank goodness. So the reason I painted over it is because I can also paint the, I don't know if you can see that in the video, hopefully you can, because it's got quite a sort of red ear because of the shade, so I keep putting my finger on it to get the colour match, you should be able to see that bit. And that's the thing, you know, it's like you don't have to draw the entire ear, you just draw what you see. <laughs> just draw what's there. And uh, you'll get it. You'll get it. Or you'll get close and you'll learn what what works and what doesn't work. I think uh, I think here I think we need to bring the eye a bit more up here. Zoom in a bit. I really want to get um, got to get the, the dark tone here. And that means I can get around underneath his eye. Bring that in here. Same over here. Because by darkening where his eye is there, as it is in the picture, it means the highlights stand out more. And then he looks awesome. Get that colour again. Bring the opacity down so I don't overdo it. I can just do this bit. 
not dark enough for me. Grab that colour, that's a good one. But as you can see, you know, you can keep going and going and going until you've got it absolutely perfect. Um, I may be stopping soon because I know I could do it more and more and more, but once I start putting in hours and hours and hours, get nothing done when I get told off by the way. <laughs> Not a good look. probably get the colour of his hair right. Let's do that. Let's use the darkest green first. Make the opacity quite high. And we'll quickly jot in I'll jot in some of his hair. one. As I said, the picture's got to inform you or you'll start to look nothing like the person you're doing. You can use this technique on anyone really. Get a friend's photograph, do a picture of them. But yeah. I don't think I'm going to apologise too much for having a long video. I think, um, I think I, this is just an experiment, to be perfectly honest. Um, if you like what you see and you want more, let me know and uh, I'll do another video because I love drawing and I love talking about drawing and I love talking about films. So it's all good as far as I'm concerned. highlights in. Turn off that blue layer. Oh yeah, that's much better. quite close up to his nose, doesn't it? It's got another Pretty cool. <clears throat> There's probably some bits I've, I've not covered yet, but like I said, I'd, I would wind up doing this for hours. I would get it right as well, a bit of a perfectionist. up start doing a 
highlights. I think I got a bit quiet, didn't I? <laughs> I want that nose to stick out a bit more. So I'll just do a bit of rim light on the top of it. I really point out. A sort of sheen going down it as well so I'll bring the opacity as down as I can and try and capture this bit here it's also a bit underneath his eye his eye. What's that from, eh? I need to lighten this eyebrow because it's in the light. It's actually got quite bushy eyebrows, isn't it? Yeah, I've done a few of them. I've done uh, I did Nick Fury a little while ago. I'm quite proud of that. All right. Now, one of the things that I do like doing is uh, grooves and things like that. So I do them like this. So let's bring the opacity down a little bit. So let's start drawing them in. And these, these kind of things I find really bring out the life in the, in the picture. Because it's stuff that some people get right, some people don't. But I feel like I've figured out how it works. And Rushing. I'm not making excuses, but I am rushing. I just wanted to show how this how this kind of behaves, so I can get like the smudge brush. Too big. So I'll sort of soften it a bit. Hey, little places. Okay, then I'll grab the white. Down the opacity there. Make it a bit bigger for this one. <clears throat> and up here, there's a few more dots of white. A few more dots of white here. Not too all over, is it? See, 
so that I wouldn't get too involved and get too deep in doing it. <laughs> Getting too invested. And so, yeah, basically you can see where the light hits near the groove. And uh, then you kind of draw a line, just sort of bring it just really close to it. Like that. Because that's how it behaves, it just captures the light. The dark part is where the groove is deep in the skin. if it's being caught caught by the light so I, I realise that I do hold my breath a little bit as well when I'm doing this right, so it probably doesn't look too convincing um, close up but further away that's where the optical illusion kicks in So it's not perfect, but it's not bad. We could be twins. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, that's how I would do Steve Rogers, and with more time and more effort. Um, I would be able to make a much better job of it. Um, but I'm glad that it came out the way it did and I'm, I'm, I hope that you enjoyed seeing what you did and let me know what you think. Uh, I'm sorry the video has been a bit long but you know you want to learn how to draw and I want to show you. So uh, see you again. Bye.